Now let's take a look at a technical term that you may not know the name for but you've definitely seen it. It's called CAPTCHA. Now here's what it looks like. This is the CAPTCHA on the Apple sign up page when you sign up for a new Apple ID. So now you probably recognize it. It's part of a web page or a sign up page or a login page where it usually asks you to type some characters that are on the screen. And usually these characters are kind of obscured or curvy or maybe they're embedded in some sort of image. They're kind of difficult to read and you're asked to type them. And the purpose of this is to make sure that you're a person, a human, who can interpret these characters and type them as opposed to some sort of bot, some sort of automatic process that's trying to say log in or create Apple IDs. Now CAPTCHA stands for Completely Automated Public Turing Test to Tell Computers and Humans Apart. Turing stands for Alan Turing, uh, the famous mathematician and early computer scientist uh, who did so much for uh, computers and cryptography and also um, came up with the idea of having a test to determine if something was human or a computer. So like if you were chatting with somebody online a Turing test would tell you if you were chatting with somebody that was a human or some sort of automatic process that was responding to you. And this is kind of what this is. It's a Turing test to determine whether or not the person filling in the form is actually a human or some sort of automatic process. Now there are many different CAPTCHA types. So the most common one you're going to see is when it shows an image of kind of an obscure text and you have to type it in. It's very hard for computers to be able to determine the characters in this kind of image. Uh, so it's a good test of whether or not it's an actual person sitting at the computer. Sometimes these are actual words that look like they're scanned in. There's a very popular system called reCAPTCHA that actually uh, has you type in usually two words, one of which it knows and one in which it doesn't. And these are from scans of old books. So as you're actually typing in the CAPTCHA you're contributing to an effort to digitize these books. Um, and lots of books, thousands of them, have been digitized through the efforts of that type of CAPTCHA. So it serves two purposes. Uh, security and also the secondary purpose of of translating these scanned text. Sometimes you're asked to, to click on images. This is popular now. Google has a system where it shows you like nine images and it says click on all the ones that have cars in them or something like that. Another way to determine whether or not it's a human because it's very hard for a computer to figure out what's in an image. Sometimes there are uh, puzzles. There are little puzzles you need to figure out. Sometimes simple math, adding something, that kind of thing. You don't see it too often anymore but it was a common type of uh, CAPTCHA a while ago. Uh, and there's other ones. There's some that are automatic now. That's just a little checkbox you check. Uh, and what it's actually doing is it's looking at your cursor movements and the timing of you hitting that checkbox. And a computer is going to be much more deliberate in doing that whereas a human is going to have kind of a human touch to actually manipulating that interface. And there's all sorts of other ways of doing it as well. And the most common one though is typing those characters from an image. The sole purpose really of CAPTCHA is to determine whether or not it's a person there. And the reason for that is because it can be a security issue when you say have a login page or a create account page and if that can be filled in automatically by a computer then thousands of accounts could be created within seconds or thousands of attempts to break into an account could be done within seconds without the CAPTCHA there to confirm that each attempt is actually by a person. So it really is kind of this security purpose for doing it. History is kind of interesting. It's not as old as you think. Uh, it's only been around since like 97, 2000 around. In 97, uh, according to Wikipedia, AltaVista, the, the search engine before Google, had uh, a submission form for submitting a new website to their search engine and it had a CAPTCHA in it. Uh, around 2000 uh, iDrive uh, also had a CAPTCHA and I, probably the biggest entry into it that really got people seeing this all the time was PayPal. Around 2000 had a CAPTCHA for their login uh, and a lot of people it, it, were using PayPal even back then and uh, this is kind of when people started seeing CAPTCHAs on a regular basis and now they have become uh, basically uh, just ubiquitous everywhere on the Internet. So. Uh, that's what those things are called. They're called CAPTCHAs and they've been around for a while and they serve 
a useful purpose even though they can actually be kind of annoying uh, especially when you see them over and over again logging into the, the same site. But right now they're kind of necessary in order to keep uh, our sites and services somewhat secure.